Hi everyone, it's Andy from Hobby Headquarters. Well, I've got an exciting new kit to share with you guys today. This is the Korean War variant of the M4A3 Easy 8 Sherman. Now this kit right here is based on the kit that came out about a year and a half ago, the World War II variant. But what to me has done is taken that great kit and added uh, some new parts to it. The new engine deck, new tracks, new figures, and a few other parts to update it to the Korean War type. Now in 1950, the United States was caught kind of off guard when the Korean War broke out because they had demobilized most of their, you know, their equipment. So they had taken 54 of the World War II variant Shermans, updated them, done all these other things to them, and then shipped them over to Korea. So that is what these are based on. And a lot of times there was a group that actually painted this kind of tiger motif on it. Some were in yellow and black or, or the red. So this is going to be a really cool looking Sherman to actually do some you know, bright colors on a, on a tank for a change. I should also tell you too, there's a bonus inside of this kit. There is this Jeep that is shown on the box art, this Gaz Jeep, J Russian Jeep. This is included inside the kit. So it's a little bonus kit inside there. Uh, this kit is actually just being announced today. Uh, around the world when this video goes out. Uh, very excited to do this. From what I understand, it'll probably be out in January for, for most of the world. So uh, I'm excited to get going. So let's get started on it. Okay, the first thing I thought I would do is show you all of the parts that make up this, this kit. And to start off, we have the, uh, the lower part of the hull. And as you can see, it's a multi-piece hull. Uh, and if you guys watched my video on the original M4 EZ8, the thing goes together absolutely beautiful. So this is a 2015 sprue right here, as well as we have the, the upper part of the hull. And you can see all of the uh, the casting marks inside of there. Those look really good. And the nice texture on the turret as well. Those two are also 2015 parts. And then we've got another piece here. We have a one-piece barrel. It is not slide molded, but you have a muzzle brake that's going to go on the top anyway, so that won't matter on it. And you can see the different parts on that. Now what I'll do too is I will take some of these parts and lay them all out and take individual pictures that if you want to, to you know to take a closer look at them we'll do that. Now this is the new uh, new set of sprues on here. This is all the, uh, the stuff for the Korean War version so we have a new new deck for the back as well as a new uh, canvas cover and a few other pieces a couple of new figures as well and just cut some other small parts and then the wheels and suspension and things like that they have been they've been slightly updated because they now have a new number on them as well and finally we have this portion right here when we have the uh, the side skirts some of the other pieces and it too has been updated because it has both the old number as well as the new number on it so they may have touched up the molds a little bit on on these portions and then finally, we're going to get to pieces like this. This is the uh, rubber band track. This is new because this is for the Korean War variant. And then this is the bonus kit that comes inside. This is the Gaz uh, little Jeep type thing, Russian Jeep. So it's, it, it's an older kit, but it's uh, pretty simple. Two sprues on it, and those build up pretty easily. And then finally, we have the, uh, the 50 cals, which is made up of multiple pieces on that. So let's start the assembly.
Okay, I'm just in the process right now of gluing on the hull extensions. And got a brand new bottle of Tamiya Extra Thin Cement all set up, ready to go. And I'll just show you this, when I was telling you earlier how well this all fits together, and you can just see it just virtually clicks into place there. So we'll glue the sides on, and then we have a firewall for the engine plate that will also glue that in. So I'm gonna take care of all that stuff right now. Thought I'd show you real quick what I was talking about earlier too. Uh, this is what I was talking about when I think they updated a mold because if you look on it, 35346 was the original Sherman kit and then 35359 is the new one that we're building right now. So uh, I don't unfortunately have another, the other sprue in front of me from the older kit to compare them to, but I'm sure all they did was just touch up a little bit here and there. Okay, I finished up the uh, the rear cover, putting on all the little toe hooks and things like that, the little back cover, and that is gonna get glued up into place in here. And then for the front, we have the, uh, the differential housing all made up. We also drilled two little holes in here into the front for later on that you're gonna need to take care of now. And this part's gonna just get glued, and all of this fits in real nice and tight. So I'm gonna go ahead and put glue on all that, and we'll come back and show you what it looks like. I'm going to quickly now show you the wheel assembly for the for the bogies on here and how nice and easy this goes together. So there is one of these little spring units that is going to get put into place on both sides. I already have the other one in on there. Then it's just a matter of touch of glue here. And we've got this little plate that will cover up the bottom. Then there's a little bit of time consuming sanding all of the uh, the parting line around the wheels, but nothing impossible. It just takes a little bit of time. So you pop those through, put a little glue on each side of that, and you basically have the entire wheel assembly done. Now I do have to do sanding on this one here. I'm just showing you how it goes together. And then you have something that looks like this. Now this parting line right here is actually supposed to be there. I almost started sanding those off thinking it was a, like a separate piece, but uh, that parting line down the middle is part of the actual the real vehicle. And then finally, we can glue them all into place on the side here as well as this has got a poly cap on it. So that's good for the drive sprocket as well as the idler in the back. That all just pops into place. So I'm going to finish up that last wheel in a second there and then we can put all those on. And then we can start work on the construction of the upper part of the hull. Now I've just glued these two little uh, pieces into place here and that is going to help hold the side of the sponson into place. And you can see here there's a little hole that it lock into and then this piece will just glue right down there so it makes it very simple. And it's also nice that they've covered up the inside of the sponson so if you do have the turret open and you look down through you won't see the light bleed that would normally come up from the, from the, uh, the wheels and tracks. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue these on, finish up the wheels, put all of those into place and we'll come back and show you what it looks like. This is a quick builder's tip too. Uh, once you get this side, I just glued all three of those uh, bogey wheels on and the wheels can get a little bit loose because there's not a huge connection point. So what I like to do is just take something straight like this sanding file here and just push on it to make sure that all of your wheels and all that stuff lines up perfectly. And once you let that sit for a little while and the glue fully let, let, holds on, you'll get a nice straight, straight thing so the tracks will have no problems going on. Okay, I've just put a little glue on the back here. Now it's time to attach part of the engine deck as well as this rear plate. And once you get it lined up, it literally just clicks into place there. And with that glued down, we can go ahead and glue the new engine deck. Now both of these pieces are, are new pieces. Uh, in fact, I'm going to put more glue on them obviously right now too, and we'll get them to fit nice and tight. And we've also gone ahead and started to make the uh, front hatches with the periscope guards, and we'll glue those in well. Now, I'm leaving off all of the tools uh, for now because we're going to paint those separately and we'll add those last, even though they call out putting them on right now. And two other little quick builder tips I want to give you. Uh, first of all, I should have said this earlier in there, uh, before you put the sponsons on, make sure you drill out all of the holes that are required on it, because uh, if not, you're gonna have a real difficult time trying to get through there. And then the next little builder's tip, 
they're, they want you to put quite a bit of pieces on top of the uh, the upper part of the hull here. And I think it's just, before you actually attach the upper and lower, I think it's going to be much easier to do all that stuff if you go ahead and just snap the top and the bottom together. And the reason I say that, first of all, it's got a poly cap back here. So it's a type of thing that if you need to absolutely take it apart, you can. So you pop this on. And the reason I say that is because there's a bunch of little pieces that stick down. and if you're putting any pressure on them, they actually stick down a little bit lower than the sponson. You can end up breaking some of the pieces off if you're not careful. Whereas this way, those pieces are now hanging. So you can still go ahead and put all the pieces on. And if for some reason you needed to take the top off, it, it just pops right back off. Now with the, uh, the top and bottom mated together, we can go ahead and start putting on all these little accessory parts, like the little, little pieces that hold the, uh, the side skirt on and some of the lights and things like that. And it's all very basic and straightforward. Fuel filler caps. Now, like I was telling you, I am gonna leave all the tools off for now. We're gonna paint those and put those on later. Okay, we've got most of the, uh, the parts, all the fuel filler tank caps on, and as well as these little pieces for the side skirt. Uh, now comes about the time that they want you to have put the, uh, the tracks on, which I'll just point out, these are some of the nicest looking rubber band tracks that I've seen. They're very, very sturdy and a lot of, uh, you know, very substantial the way they feel. But because of the type of tank that we have right here, we can actually pop these on anytime. So we're going to leave those off and paint them and weather them separately. Now we also have to plan now for painting up the, the front of this vehicle because they give you multiple markings in here. And if you want to do the one with the red front, there is a specific uh, type of gun holder that you have to use. Now I did make a tiny mistake and I drilled these two holes out right here and I did those for the other variant. So if you accidentally do that, you have the option of either putting that little piece on there, which is not correct for that red one, or do what I'm going to do is I'm, I just sanded lightly over there to take the burr off. We're going to fill it with a little bit of putty, uh, go over it and sand it again, and actually once we get it sanded, it'll never even notice that it was there. So I'm going to take care of that and we're just in the process now. Uh, starting to sand up all the light guards. We'll put all of those on, get this all snapped into place here, and we'll come back and show you what it looks like. Okay, we've completed the main uh, construction on the hull of the vehicle, and there's only some little minor things that when it comes to painting will be easier to paint off the vehicle than not. Now I've started taking the barrel. The barrel is one piece, but it had a really, really fine parting line, as you'd imagine, down the middle of it. But using some of our new Tamiya foam sponging sanding papers, I uh, was really able to knock it down. And now I know because of the coloration on here, it looks like it's scratched, but it's actually very, very smooth. And that's just because of the type of color that the plastic is. And I was thinking about doing a metal barrel on this one, but honestly, we've got uh, pretty good uh, seam removal going with those with those sanding papers and I think we'll be able with a little bit more cleanup really get it really smooth so I think I'm just gonna go ahead and use the barrel that uh, comes in the kit and uh, now there is a new mantlet inside there as well that we will pop in there so we'll glue all these pieces together I've also started gluing together some of the pieces on the uh, the top of the turret there are a couple little holes that they want you to drill out too in advance and we've glued the pieces onto the bottom of this here so we can go ahead and kind of just glue all these main together. I'm not going to go into super depth on the uh, construction of the turret on this and that's mainly because it goes together very similar to the way the last kit I did is and it's very very simple and straightforward. I'll show you a little bit more as we put some of the other pieces on but you can just see the fit is very very tight. Uh, there are some poly cap pieces in the front here so this gun will obviously be able to completely move once we glue that into place there. So I'm gonna start doing some more work on this, clean up the barrel a little bit more and the, uh, the muzzle brake, get it all nice and smooth. Oh, one other thing too, I was just looking at a book and I realized that I called it something different. In the beginning of the video, I called this the, the tiger motif and it's actually the devil motif and I apologize about that. They, they, in Korean War, they used either the tiger with the tiger stripes on it or these red devil on it. And I was thinking of those tigers, but it actually is the red devil one that we're going to be doing. Okay, I've begun uh, working on the 50 cal that's going to go up on top here and although the uh, the kit is is got a nice machine gun in it I wanted to upgrade the 50 cal to this uh, turned brass and completely hollowed out piece looks very very nice on this now to start off the very first piece you want to put on I'm gonna see if I can show you guys the best I can because 
This stuff is very tiny. The very first piece you want to put on just by putting a touch of super glue inside there and then filling that on the back. Then you've got a turn brass hollowed out barrel. And then if we can grab a hold of these parts. As you can see, they're, they're quite small, but not too, too bad. Then we can slide that on. And then we have a brand new 50 caliber. I'm gonna put it in back of this right here so you can see it. Barrel to go on there. So, now this part I'm gonna do off camera because it's a little bit of a, of a pain, but we're gonna cut this one off completely. And then we have drill, drill out a little hole that'll allow that one to go in. We also have a new charging handle and a new set of grips for the back. And finally, we also have the, uh, the barrel handle that we're going to file down the little burr on the end there and then we'll just bend it around the, uh, the machine gun barrel. And now that we're working on the turret a little more, i am gone ahead and glued up three sides of the, uh, the, the canvas here that is going to cover the mantlet and it'll, uh, oh, goes on like this actually and it'll click right on to there. And I just find that it'll be easier to put this on, sand the seam out a little bit, and then paint it separately. And all we'll have to do is just slide the bottom piece on and that'll be easy to glue on. We're also going to leave the commander's cupola loose. And that is because of all these little holes right here. There are individual glass pieces that'll go inside there. So I've tried the last time, in fact, I made a comment that you'll be able to just pop them in through the bottom. I was able to do that, but it was very, very, very difficult to do, and it took me a lot longer to do than I, than I probably needed to. So I've just decided we're just going to leave that loose. I will, I will glue this to um, the, uh, the other hatch down inside there, but just to make it easier on ourselves, we'll leave it that way. And then we'll also glue the machine gun pedestal right there. Okay, we've got the uh, principal construction of the vehicle done up now and we're just about to start to go to paint. At first we're going to spray it with our NATO black to kind of give it a test coat to see if there's any more sanding or anything more repair that we need to do. Also I've got all the tools and things all ready to get painted as well but I want to just point out to you on this the uh, the tow cable that comes with it is now done in a bronze colored uh, string which that was always one of my little pet peeves about getting white string in a kit. It's always such a pain to paint because of all the different sides on it. So this, I know this is a minor thing to maybe some of you guys, but I'm very, very happy that this is done up in a brown, uh, brown string like this. So now I'm going to go ahead and paint it in the NATO black and we'll show you what it looks like. Okay, now we're going to shoot the model with NATO black. I'm always getting asked which airbrush I'm using at the time. Today we're going to be using the uh, Tamiya's HD3. Okay, we finished the shadow and the highlight coat, and as you'll notice here, I've sprayed the entire front plate a, uh, a white, a flat white, and that is so when we put the, the red color on there, it'll pop a little bit more and it won't be so dark on it. So now I'm going to go ahead and spray the rest of the model, everything but the front, in uh, XF62 Olive Drab. Okay, I've pulled the masking tape off and we have our red color in place. Then I went and sprayed the entire model with uh, TS-80, which is a dull coat, and then just sprayed the front of it with TS-13 to give it a little bit of a gloss effect, and that's going to help us put the decals down. Normally I don't worry about gloss for you know a small amount of decals, but there's some rather large decals on this, plus this has a texture to it, so we really want those to lay down really well. And we're going to use our Mark Fit Strong and just show you the first decal. We're going to put a layer of it down under this. Now this has got a pretty big ridge to go over, so we want to make sure we have plenty of it on there. And then 
we're going to just take the decal. Slide it into place there. And then put another coat on top of it. And we'll keep doing this on all the decals. And after about five minutes, we'll come back with a cotton swab to push that in there to make it wrap around that, uh, that raised detail. Okay, I've put a couple of coats down of the mark fit. And now, like I was telling you, we're just using the cotton swab to kind of blot it into position. And you can see how it starts to wrap around. I'll zoom in a little bit more for you guys. And it's because these are pretty some pretty deep things, we're going to use quite a few coats on this, probably like three or four. And the same is going to be true for the, uh, the tooth one here, because this one has got to go into quite a few little things as well. Now, little builder's tip here. This top little uh, nose part of the thing, this is all one big decal. And if I had known that, I would have either left the... Uh, the barrel holder off or cut the decal into multiple pieces because that was really really difficult once we had it uh, to get it on there but I think we've got a good now we still have to go back inside after all this dries and paint the inside of those uh, circles black but I really want to get all of this other decals laid down first before we start doing anything like that okay let me kind of go over with you guys what I've done so far I went and finished up pushing the two decals for the, uh, I guess, the nostrils on this, uh, on this devil. And I couldn't leave well enough alone, and I ended up screwing up the other side of this decal. I was moving it around, so I hand-painted the top of the nose as well as around here. And actually, looking at some pictures, I found some pictures of the real thing, and they are not perfect circles by any means. So I think it looks pretty good. It looks more like it was drawn on like it was. We've also gone ahead and attached all the side tracks, put on all of the tools. Now the tools I weathered in on before I put them in place. We also put the uh, canvas cover on and I painted that basically with the olive drab color thinned or dialed down a little bit with dark yellow to kind of lighten it to give it kind of like a canvasy effect. We also went ahead and sprayed the tracks with our track color, which I'll show you what's in the corner right over there. We also put all of our clear lenses in and our clear lenses on the front here now. So basically it's mostly completed construction wise and painting. So now all I have to really do is start weathering it. Okay, I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do with the tracks now. We're just taking some of Tamiya's brown panel liner and putting a thin coat on top of the tracks. Now remember, I've already painted them with our uh, track color that I've told you about. Now we're gonna take a little bit of Vallejo's Light Sienna and start blending that in to the tracks lightly. Now you really can't see it very well right now because it's very wet, obviously. So once that dries, we're gonna get a nice film on it of like of a dusty, kind of grimy little thing. We can go over that later too with some other grimes to darken it. But we're gonna go ahead and do this right now and I'm gonna do all of the tracks and we'll come back and show you what it looks like once it dries. Okay, now we're going to start putting a little bit of a streaking grime on some of these things, just more or less to highlight some of these areas. I don't wanna to go too, too heavy with it because we really wanna show off the vehicle and it's not about dirtying this up. If you wanna dirty it up, um, when you get your kit, you'll be able to go to town on it. But for this video, we're just gonna do some light washes so we'll put a little bit of the streaking grime on all the little nuts and bolts in here. It's more or less just going to highlight everything. And, that, and hopefully you can see now too, the track is starting to dry out and see that film of dust that we put on there. And then we're also going to do a little bit up on the top here. So we're taking just a little bit of enamel thinner. brushing it into the area and I find the enamel thinner is going to help the uh, streaking grime flow a little bit better. I should also point out too we have sealed the entire model with uh, dull coat and he's putting a couple little drops of it up there and then just slightly pull it down. Now dark on dark it's 
it's very hard to see probably on the camera, but you will be able to notice little streaks of it in person once all of this dries. We're also going to use a little bit of light rust wash and do the same kind of thing and not necessarily duplicate rust, but to duplicate some lighter grime. I also want to go over all these spare tracks and give, just give it a little, just a little touch here and there on it. So I'm going to go over the whole vehicle and start uh, doing all the weathering on it and we'll come back and show you what it looks like when it's done. Well, here we are. Here's our completed model. And I'll first go ahead and give you a little 360 view of the entire build. Now, as you can imagine, it's a Tamiya kit, so the, uh, the fit was incredible. Everything just fell together like it's supposed to in the instructions. The part count wasn't very high at all as well. And it's about 60%, about as I was telling you earlier, of the other kit that came out about a year and a half ago, the regular World War II EZ-8. There is that new sprue and a new updated sprue and, of course, new tracks on it as well. But uh, very, very nice kit. And what I can kind of show you, too, is since this is a Korean War one, this will actually go really well with our big M40 that we built a while ago. Although this one came out in World War II, it actually saw the majority of its uh, use in Korea. So they make a great combination pair for it. So I want to thank you guys as always for watching and please stay tuned because we have many more videos coming. And if you haven't had a chance to subscribe yet, you can do so by clicking the button right down below.